Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical differential equation. We have the y over dx equals the square root of y minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Now, I'm going to attempt something that we normally use for these kinds of equations, especially when they are homogeneous, which is changing the variables. So would it work if I just said, okay, suppose y equals u times x, u being another variable in this case, of course, right? So can we go from the yx world to the ux world? Let's go ahead and take a look. When you replace y with ux, you're basically assuming that y over x is equal to u, for which x does not equal 0, obviously, because if x is 0, then y is 0. If they're both 0, we're going to have a constant derivative, so on and so forth. That's a different story. Let's just go ahead and assume they're not, and let's just proceed with this. If y is equal to ux, you're going to go ahead and replace y with ux here, ux minus 1, and then you're going to have x minus 1 under the radical, right? Is this expression going to simplify to something nicer? So we can go ahead and give it a try. First of all, what is dy over dx if y is equal to ux, right? So we kind of need to think about differentiating both sides. Let's go ahead and do that first, and then we'll get back to the radical. So if you differentiate this with respect to x, notice that everything is differentiated with respect to x. This is going to be like y prime equals the derivative of u multiplied by x plus the derivative of x times u. This is the product rule. As you know, if you have the product of two functions, then this is the rule you use. So y prime is dy over dx, so I should be able to replace it with that. And then on the right hand side, I should have this, right? Let's go ahead and see what happens if you do it. So y prime is going to be replaced with u prime x plus u. And then this is going to equal the square root of ux minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Now, the expression inside the radical didn't really simplify nicely, did it? For example, if we didn't have a u here, like, or if u was 1, just assume, then you would get a constant term, which would be nice, right? That doesn't mean u is a constant, it just means the coefficient of x is a constant, right? But in this case, things are a little bit more complicated. So how can we solve this problem? You could definitely try squaring both sides at this point, right? So you can go and square both sides and get rid of the radical. But that will bring other complications because now you're going to have a nonlinear differential equation. Because when you square u prime, that basically makes it nonlinear. And that's going to give us a lot of trouble. I don't even know if this is solvable at this point. So this was just an attempt. I knew it wasn't going to work. And the reason for that is this equation is not homogeneous. What does homogeneous mean? If you have something like, let's say, the square root of y plus x divided by y minus x, and let's say this is equal to dy over dx, you could probably do this in another video, and you know when you replace y with ux, you're going to get ux plus x divided by ux minus x, and then you're going to be able to go ahead and factor out the x, and then you'll be getting something much, much nicer. Of course, with the radicals, this is going to look like this. And then what you're going to have is, because u, y prime is equal to u prime x plus u, you're going to get something like this, right? And since we only have u on the right-hand side, put the other u there, and this should be, a, again, a separable differential equation. Okay? So things would be much nicer, obviously, but we don't have that luxury, right? So this is not homogeneous. So replacing y with something like ux is not going to help us. So what is going to help us? Let's go ahead and find out. And I'm going to rewrite the equation. So our equation is dy over dx equals the square root of y minus 1 over x minus 1. Great. Now, this equation is not homogeneous. But guess what? It's even better. <laughs> it's separable. You know why? because we can separate the radicals, exactly. And each radical is only going to contain a single variable, in which case we're good to go. We still have to do some work, but it's much better than you know, something not working, or even if it worked, we would have to do a lot of work, right? I mean, it's just work, work, work. Okay, we're not afraid of work, but obviously you want to take an easier route if that exists. So, what should we do? 
divide by root y minus 1 and multiply by dx. In other words, separate the variables so that you can have the y's on one side and the x's on the other. Now, at this point, you separated the variables. What is the next step? Integrating both sides, right? And when you integrate, of course, you're going to integrate on the left with respect to y, on the right with respect to x, and that's perfectly fine because those are separate d's and we have to do separately. And then we're going to get an equality and we're going to be able to hopefully solve it. What is the integral of dy over the square root of y minus 1? And you know what's really nice about this problem? Whatever you get here, just replace the answer with, uh, replace the y with x in the answer. And that's going to give you the right hand side because they're basically the same integrals. Well, there's different variables. So does that mean y equals x? That would be a good point, right? I mean, if the right hand side and the left hand side give us the exact same functions inside the integrand, integral symbol, whatever, you get the idea. Then does that mean y equals x? Let's find out. Okay, cool. Now, when you integrate something like this, let's just do this and we can plug in the x. Okay, so to solve a problem like this, I'm going to go ahead and use u substitute. I'm not going to use u, I'm going to use u substitute. So let's go ahead and set this equal to u. Square root of y minus 1 equals u. That implies that y minus 1 is equal to u squared. Square both sides, obviously. And then d both sides. d meaning differentiate with respect to x, but forget about dx. Make sense? So the take the derivative of y minus 1, which is 1, right? And that's going to give you dy. And on the right hand side, the derivative of u squared is 2u. Happy birthday to u if it's your birthday. And then du. You always have to multiply by the d. Uh, in other words, you can also look at it as, in this case, that just works nicely. y is equal to u squared plus 1. If you differentiate y with respect to u, then you will get 2u. And then if you cross multiply, you get what we have. Make sense? But you can also think of it as follows. Here, differentiate this with respect to x. So you're going to get dy over dx. And on the right hand side, you're going to get 2u du over dx. And then dx is going to cancel out magically, mathematically. And then you're going to get this. Okay. No matter what, get used to doing this because we always do these. These. Okay. Cool. So now let's go ahead and plug it in. What am I going to replace square root of y minus 1 with? u and dy with 2u du. So that's going to be like 2u du divided by u. By the way, square root of y minus 1 is u. So y minus 1 is u squared. If you replace y minus 1 with u squared, you kind of get the absolute value, but don't worry about it. It's all good. Okay. That's the integral I'm looking at, and it's super simple. Come on. Couldn't get better, right? Uh, we have a 2 times du, and the integral of du is just u. But there's a constant, but don't worry, we're going to put that on the right-hand side. So the integral of this guy is 2u or 2 times this guy here. 2 times the square root of y minus 1. So this integral is 2 times the square root of y minus 1. Of, of course, the constant will come at the end. But notice that it makes sense because if you differentiate a radical, you're going to differentiate the inside, which is 1, and divide by 2 times the same thing, right? And the 2's cancel out, we get that. Make sense? And of course, this implies that dx over the square root of x minus 1 is going to be 2 times the square root of x minus 1, but with a plus c, let's go ahead and set these equal to each other. Remember, we were going to put the constant on the right-hand side, and we did, right? So we're going to have to have a c. You don't need it on both sides. By the way, we're going to check our answers with Wolfram Alpha, so let's see what we get from here. So notice that y equals x is not automatically implied unless c is equal to 0. But c is an arbitrary constant. That's your choice. Anyways, we don't have initial conditions. I know some people don't like it. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide everything by 2. And then that's going to give us half of c, which is fine. And then we're going to go ahead and square both sides, right? Shall we? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. That's fun, right? y minus 1. And the right-hand side, you're going to get the square root of this. Square the second term. And then plus 2 times this times that. 2's cancel out, we end up with something nice, and then the 1's cancel out, then we get y equals x plus c times the square root of x minus 1 plus c squared divided by 4. Now, can I replace c squared divided by 4 by another constant? Yes, but then you have to change the c. So these are not totally independent, 
and that should give you the solution. Let's go ahead and check our answers against Wolfram Alpha, and then we're going to see what happens. Did we get the same thing? Okay, make a note of this, and we're going to take a look. Ta-da! Wolfram Alpha gives us the following solution. If you distribute the 1, I mean 1 fourth, you're going to get the same thing or not. All right, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.